Golden, things that have been sung, it's a great body of work and you've received many kind words, rightfully so. With this latest record, you know, how important was it to have more personality in the music? Well, I think it was a pretty conscious effort just to make more personality within the music for sure. Just to draw from the only reality I have, which is my own. Um, it's an okay record, it's not that good. I'll try to make a better one next time, I think. But yeah, I think I'm on the way to making good records. And in terms of production value for this record, you know, there's there's more detail, a lot, a lot of overdubs, a real focus on each track, you know, almost meticulous. What was the reasoning? That was that a conscious decision for you? I mean, we just had more time to do things like that. Every record before has been kind of winging it, but that's just kind of because we had no time nor money to do it. So this this time is a little more relaxed going around. It was fun to do. Yeah, and the songs flow so nicely throughout. How key was the aspect of sequencing for you? Well, I mean, that's always huge, you know, growing up on records that are records, you know. It's the, the, the sequencing is when it's finally done, you know. Yeah, and you're aiming for a more rigid structure. It's a lot more calculated and, and, and structured. Was that, was that something that, you know, allowed you to excel in the studio when you were forming these tracks? Yeah, it's definitely all um, through rehearsals and taking our time in the studio. Everything we... When we were writing, we just did on the road, and it was pretty spontaneous. Let's talk about this body of work. I wanted to get your views on some of the material, the half-wit in me. I mean, tell me about this song. What sort of motivation do you draw on to pen a track like this? I don't know. It's it's pretty self-depreciating and funny. I don't know. It's kind of a funny song. Mm -hmm. I, and that, that, that word comes uh, comes out a lot for yourself, appreciating, you know. I mean, like that's the type of humor that you and your friends have. I mean, you wanted the record to kind of entail that, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, again, going back to reality, it's just what I, what happens all the time between my friends and I is just shitting on each other. Yeah. Know, so it's fun. Yeah. And tell me about fleshing out and forming the song The Roundabout. It's, it's, it's you know, it stands out as one of the top tracks on the record. I mean, what was that, what resonated with you most about this track? Uh, I just came with the riff, we were on tour, and we tried it one night, and I just kind of spouted off lyrics. I came with the Netherlands somewhere. And yeah, it was just kind of on, kind of spur of the moment. The song just kind of grew from there, and it's still growing for that matter. You know, it changes every night. All the lyrics on this record are very conversational. Is that because that's how you talk with your friends, and you wanted it to be that way? For is that part of the reason why you wanted it to be that way? Yeah, I guess I didn't want to do another record of just kind of grandois, like kind of bullshit poetry either. Um, you know, it's conversational is kind of the style that comes to me easiest. I think, or it's most natural. You know. Yeah. yeah, changing the band when you play live too is, is always refreshing. Is that is that something that's liberating for you to perform with different individuals and keep it changing when you hit the stage? Yeah, definitely. That makes every show kind of unique and every record unique for that matter. Mm -hmm. I'm get, I'm just lucky enough to have so many friends who are great at what they do that come along with me, and it's a real joy. Mm -hmm. And tell me about I mean, whilst you've been in the UK, what's piqued your interest most? I know you've been here quite a few times and you've played shows all throughout the country. I mean. Well, what, what aspects do you admire mostly, I mean, you know, in terms of landmarks and locations with the UK? Tesco Express, Mark and Spencer, Simply Food. <laughs> yeah, just, those are great places. I'm not being paid to say that. Uh, I like the south, like on the sea, you know, or, you know, way up north in the moors or something. And when you were in Brighton, did you manage to get the fish and chips that you were after? Oh, yeah, all the time. It's a beautiful place. The vocals on, the, on, on your last record, you were stretching quite hard. Was it... Uh, was it a key decision to change that this time around with this latest record? Yeah, I think in any record you want to always change the formula, kind of. Mm -hmm. So we were hoping to do that, and I guess some some of that seeped through. You know, right? It'll change the next time. You know, it's just about growing and becoming more confident in your art and your voice and whatnot. Uh -huh. What was the most challenging aspect, you know, in forming this body of work for you? Uh, it wasn't a lot of challenge to be honest. I mean, we had so much fun making it. All I can think about is so much fun we had, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I, I was going through a few personal things and um, maybe just kind of setting really high standards for myself. But I mean, beyond that, you know, I, I had tons of fun making it. I mean, it was my friends and I, you know, drinking beer and making a cool record. It was great. I wanted to ask you about the following tweet. Uh, your dream role would be in a baseball movie as the guy who sells peanuts understand and gets clobbered by a foul ball. Oh yeah, well, that's just kind of pulled from my childhood. I watched baseball movies when I was a kid. So, you know, kind of minute sort of film roles always make me laugh. 
what, 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 what gets most rotation on, on your YouTube on your Netflix when you do get a chance to watch watch some telly oh shit man I really watch TV much right now um, I watch movies all the time but I mean TV shows are like Black Mirror's lame I hated it yeah. it was okay I know everybody here likes it which is kind of like Oh, mobile phones is no good, bro. You know, it's yeah. just like, oh, bro, mobile phones, no good. It's kind of what I got. What else is good? I'm just talking about what sucked. Um, Bojack Horseman's funny. And which movies in recent times have you gained most from? I just watched Hell or High Water, also a David McKenzie film. That was beautiful. It's kind of a modern western sort of thing. Um, you know. It's Coen Brothers-ish, but kind of, you know, more in a direct Western style. Mm. Cheers. What would you say is your biggest drive? Um, I don't know. Just trying to stay in the game. I'm just a dumpy white dude. I don't really... You know, there's too many of us. We have a lot of shit. We don't have much shelf life. You know, it's fucking in this biz, you know. And I'm kind of not into it anyway, so I'm just trying to ride it out and as much fun as I can with it and enjoy it. You know. And finally, what's pleased you most about the progression you've made to date? Oh, I've just made so many good friends along the way. You know, people have helped me. It's, I mean, I put a lot of work into it, but there's you know, there's a lot of people who have helped me out, and they've become very good friends. And for that, I'm very grateful.